In this video, I'm going to share why your CV photo or resume photo is damaging your chances, or if you don't have a photo, why it could if you add one. So I covered this briefly in my CV advice series on how to write a CV, specifically in my video on mistakes that are hurting your chances. But the reason that I am dedicating a video specifically to this topic is because of how often I see it, particularly done badly. And it's so widespread that I need to expand on this topic a little bit. And also doing a slightly deeper dive would help you if you are applying for lots of jobs and you're wondering if there's anything that you can tweak about your CV. So first and most importantly, think about what your CV itself is for. I explained this quite well in the video that I mentioned earlier, so I'll just let myself do the talking in a quick snippet from that video. But I would like you to think about whether or not you should include a photo like this. The purpose of your CV is to assess your suitability for the job that you're applying for. This means that everything you put on that document is being used to assess your suitability. So when you apply for a job, do you want to be assessed on your skills, experience and relevant qualifications? Or do you want to be assessed on your photo and the way that you look? If you don't, then don't include a photo. Everything on this document is what you're saying that you want to be judged and assessed by for the job. If your looks isn't one of those things, remove the photo if you have one. Don't want to be assessed on your age? Then don't include your date of birth or any other sensitive data like your personal full address or any other personal information. Now I know that some of you may be a bit shocked because you've always used a picture or somebody that you know told you to include one or a multitude of other reasons and I understand that there are some exceptions to this rule. One is your country. In some countries, it is the custom to include your photo on a CV. And if you don't include something that is part of the hiring custom, it could hurt your chances. So please do include one if that is required or expected where you live. In the UK, it's not mandatory, but I can appreciate that this is going to be different around the world. The second exception is if the photo is relevant to the job you're applying for. For example, a fashion model. Then of course, a photo makes sense because they need to see what you look like. So now that we've established that this is a document where you're essentially listing all the things that you want to be judged on for the job that you want, we can dive deeper into the photo itself and some of the common issues. Number one is a good photo. So I've seen a lot of advice that states that if you're going to have a CV photo, make sure that it's a good photo. But I think we need to appreciate that a good photo is subjective and down to personal opinion on what good is. Not to throw any shade, but I'm sure that we've all been on social media and seen a photo of someone that you don't think is flattering or is inappropriate. And you've wondered why that person chose that photo for their profile picture. And this could be on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram any social media network. Or you see a picture that you like, but many other people don't. And this is of course because pictures are subjective. And as much as recruiters should be totally objective when they're looking through CVs and looking through applications, I've worked with many recruiters over the last 10 years and I can assure you that they're just as human as you and I and do sometimes hold certain opinions. And this isn't helped when there are photos that are taken from strange or weird angles, from the side or looking off in a random odd direction as though something is happening over there, overly airbrushed photos to the point of looking a bit cartoonish, people that are clearly drunk or giddy in the pub wearing skimpy swimwear, fishing. I've even seen photos that are clearly taken before someone is going out for the night and so they have the bathroom as a background on their CV. Now there is nothing wrong with going to the pub or wearing a skimpy bikini or any of the things that I mentioned but is it relevant to the customer service or IT job that you applied for? Almost definitely not. It is irrelevant and a bit unprofessional as well um, So, and I see this way more often than I should. So everything on your CV should be hyper relevant if you want to get selected. So I'm not going to advise you on what a good CV photo is. Of course, there's a general acceptable level for a professional CV photo. But in my opinion, remove this obstacle altogether if you can. What are your thoughts? Do you have a photo on your CV? Um, leave a comment and let me know if you agree. I'd be really interested to find out your opinion. If you're getting value from this video and you want to support this channel, you can buy me a simple coffee, which would be much appreciated. It's really quick and there's a link in the description to show you how to do that. Um, if you can't, then a simple like would make a huge impact and ensure that this video is shown to more people that are searching on YouTube for advice on their CV. So next is unconscious bias. So I haven't addressed this topic so far because it's so complex and there's so much to it and behind it. 
studies, stats, data, and how it affects the entire recruitment process as well as final selection. But in regards to a CV photo, when people think of unconscious bias or bias of any kind, I've noticed from the training sessions that I've been involved in in the past, that people tend to immediately think of underrepresented groups or very specific criteria that could cause someone to discriminate. But unconscious bias can affect anyone of any background. Even if you are not part of any kind of underrepresented group, you don't know who is reviewing your CV and the biases that they may hold unconsciously. So I don't recommend adding anything that could create an unnecessary disadvantage, which brings me to my next point. Unnecessary disadvantage. Because a CV photo is not mandatory in the UK, as I mentioned earlier, the majority of CVs that I see don't have photos. But let's say that you apply for a job with 99 other candidates and it goes through to a recruiter. So they have 100 CVs and there are 10 including yours with photos and 90 without. They would then be assessing 90 CVs based on skills, experience, education, etc., and 10 CVs based on skills, experience, education, plus what those people look like. You're adding an extra possible hurdle and whether the recruiter knows it or not, everything that you see on a CV is taken in and assimilated by your brain. How consciously you use that information is a different matter, but it's there. So don't add extra hurdles against other candidates. So I don't recommend including a CV photo, but what should you include? So I covered this in my CV advice series that I mentioned earlier, specifically in these two videos, which I'll link in the description below. I also have a freebie for you. If you're building your CV, this should really help you. This is my winning CV guide. It's simple but effective and covers what types of things you should be including if you're building your CV. So things like what achievements to include, examples of strong key skills, and what to do if you don't have experience. It even includes a sample CV. It's totally free and you can download yours in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, do like and subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you'll know when a new video is ready for you. And I'll see you in the next video.